The Constitution class starship is a ship that allowed many of us to explore strange new worlds, meet new civilizations, and to boldly go where no one has gone before from the comfort of our homes. The Constitution class is a heavy cruiser starship that was in service from 2240 to 2270. It was first developed into 2230 when Starfleet realized that they needed a vessel that could explore space while protecting Federation interests and expand its reach. The following Constitution class starships include the USS Constitution, Defiant, Eagle, Edmund, Endeavor, Enterprise, Excalibur, Exeter, Hood, Intrepid, Lexington, and Potmican. The most famous of these Constitution class starships was of course the Enterprise, which was first launched from the San Francisco Naval Shipyards in 2245 under the command of Captain Robert April. Captain Robert April commanded the Enterprise until 2250, where First Officer Christopher Pike took command from the from 2250 to 2265. During this time, Captain Christopher Pike hands command over the Enterprise over to Captain James T. Kirk, who becomes the most famous captain to command the Enterprise. The Constitution is 280 meters in length, 127 meters wide, and its height is 73 meters. It has a mass of 190,000 metric tons. It has 21 decks, a crew complement of 430 personnel. Its cruising warp speed is warp 6 and a maximum warp speed of warp 8. Its armament consists of seven dual emitter phaser banks, two torpedo launchers, and a deflector shield. The ship has a complement of four Class F shuttlecraft, which launched from the aft section of the secondary hull. The Constitution class features a saucer, engineering, and warp missile layout, which was used by most Starfleet vessels during this time. The vessel had 14 science labs located in the primary hull. Approximately seven turbo lifts serviced both the primary and secondary halls. Crew quarters were located throughout the saucer section. Deck 5 housed senior officer quarters. There were at least six recreational rooms and one holographic rec room. In addition, the Constitution class had an arboretum, gymnasium, a chapel, theater room, and a bowling alley of all things. On Deck 6, the sick bay was located. Such facilities included examination room, nursery, the chief medical officer's office, and the medical lab. Life support system was controlled from this deck as well. Deck 17 housed the landing bay and the cargo hold. Within the landing bay doors was a force field that was built into the bulkheads. This allowed craft to enter the bay, all while maintaining the atmosphere and temperature. Main engineering was located on both decks 14 and 15. From here, the ship's warp was controlled along with thrust and power systems. The dilithium crystal was also located here. Deck 14 was the uppermost level of the engineering and was the anchoring framework for the connection of the dorsal and the nacelle pylons. The front end of the deck housed the engineering computer monitoring room, which encircled the cortical intermix shaft and opens to the rear into the engineering bay. Deck 15 was the main engineering room. At the center of this room, and also extended to both the above and below deck, was the vertical linear intermix chambers, which operated the impulse drive and provided enough power to other shipboard systems. Both the matter and antimatter chambers were contained in a series of magnetic bottles that were housed in pause at the base of the intermix chamber. Deck 1 was the Constitution class's primary command center, the main bridge. The main bridge was located on top of the ship's primary hull. From here, the commanding officer was able to supervise the entire ship's operations. The propulsion system of the Constitution class was fitted with both lithium and dilithium reactor circuits in the warp drive assembly. As mentioned before, the cruising speed was warp 6, while the maximum warp cruising speed was warp 8. Warp 9 was also possible, but it was unsafe at this velocity. The maximum warp speed recorded for this class was warp 14.1, achieved by the Enterprise, but the ship was not structured to handle such speeds for any length of time. The Enterprise was able to maintain the velocity for approximately 15 minutes. The deflector shield was broken into four segments and was powerful for its time. It was capable of absorbing and repulsing a bombardment of energy impacts equal to the detonation of 364 photon tor torpedoes of the same type the Enterprise was carrying. Despite the deflector shields being capable of withstanding such impacts, it was vulnerable to phaser bombardment. Diverting all power with the exception of emergency power to the shields reduced power to the phasers by 50%. Constitution class systems in the 2250 were initially armed with directed energy weapons that could destroy half a continent. In addition, these ships also had laser cannons that were capable of operating on emergency fed remotely from the ship. By the 2260s, phaser banks replaced the laser banks that consisted of a single emitter. The phaser banks had a firing range of 90,000 kilometers. 
They were capable of being adjusted to stun, heat, or disintegrate that included objects or beings in space or on a planet's surface. The phasers could be adjusted to from narrow to wide beam, and when motion sensors were available, the phasers could be set for an approximate blast. Phaser emitters were located on the lower parts of the ventral side of the saucer section, port, starboard, midship, and on the aft emitters above the shuttle base on the secondary hull. The combined arsenal could destroy an entire planet's surface. The Constitution class was designed for long-duration missions with minimal support. These vessels usually operated widely dispersed from other ships and encounters with sister class vessels were few and far in between. Despite the success of the Constitution class, these ships' missions operated under highly dis dangerous circumstances resulting in a high rate of loss. This iconic ship graced our screens from 1966 to 1969 and is much loved by both Star Trek and Sci fans alike. Thank you for watching this video. If you wish to see future videos, please click on the subscribe button. Be sure to click on the bell icon as well so you can be notified when I upload. Also, be sure to rate, share, and comment on this video. I would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you.